Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding newsletter. You can check it out right on the front page of TFNN. It's the opening call. It's very easy to get the, um, the Basil's newsletter, folks. As you come over to TFNN, uh, bottom line, you're going to go into newsletters. Uh, bottom line, you're going to see it right on the right-hand side of the opening call. You can get the opening call for one month. There it is. You're going to get it for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $695, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. You can get it for one year, folks, for $1,195, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come, folks, with a huge amount of education that Basil has on his page. Okay, so when you get this, you're going to get about 10 archives to really understand how the market moves. If you enjoy it, bottom line, you may pay for it. If you don't enjoy it in 30 days, bottom line, you get your money back. So check it out. Front page of TFNN. You go with the newsletters. You see the opening call right on the left-hand side. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Nothing new. Yeah, just a very quiet market. Yeah. Going to the end of the year, you know, nothing happening. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's pretty wild. There's no doubt, man. This is. So when we when we spoke last, we were looking at 900 point moves in the Dow with the futures um, intraday. I mean that that was big. You can see on this side, the left side here with the daily chart. Look at those big red candles. And then what happened is, I. I I use a couple of techniques and I use them over and over again because what I believe very strongly is that it doesn't matter what particular techniques anybody uses as long as you're consistent and you use them the same way over and over you don't you don't modulate them to form fit whatever it is you just that's the way it is and that's the way you use it so I, I like to talk about little candles sometimes little doji I have just three or four candles that are really important to me in the candlestick charting method but I also have some moving averages and you can see we spoke about this that little doji candle all-time high on the Dow on the 8th of November at 36,565. That's where we actually started a short position that very day within 40 points. We didn't keep it for too long, unfortunately. But they're, they're the pattern. We look at that H pattern. The Dow broke down, started a move down, and then it accelerated. And where did it stop? And that to me is really the most important thing right on the 200 period moving average. And I'll show you right now this orange line right here. Well, in different programs, it comes out different colors, but it's orange, this thick line right here. And I said, uh, and that, and on when I spoke to you last week, we still had a couple of days to go. And as the market tumbled down, the the the, the length of the down moves, in other words, the, the length of the red candles, accelerated, got bigger and bigger. And then we we closed. Remember that Friday? It looked like it was going to be a great day. The market was move, moving up, and then all of a sudden it turned around and it closed at the low. And what happened is I like to use that 200 period moving average, but I use it with many other things. So that to me was when I did my homework on Friday, I said, you know what, I, Friday night, I said, this is going to be very interesting. And as I went over the uh, my, the market on, on the Saturday, I did my overview, uh, web, uh, the video for my subscribers. I said, this is going to be very interesting because it's held very nicely. And there's a chance on Monday that we're going to actually, we, we already holding the long position, a core long position from the low, starting at the lows of last March, March the tw in 2020. And we've been trading up and down. We're using the diamonds and the DOG, which is the inverse of the Dow. But at this particular point, I said we might go long. So we did actually go long. Unfortunately, we got just stopped out, and the very next day, the market moved even higher. So we wanted to add to our long position. That one just worked very briefly. Unfortunately, it was taken out. However, looking at the candle, I've got a pattern that I call, um, it's, it's, I'll do it right here. It's got it's like a de declining cone formation. In other words, as the price is, where did that go? Whoops, I've done something wrong. I can't show it right now. Oh, there it is. Um, as the price is coming down from a, a particular high, it makes lower highs and much lower lows. And the most important thing about this is I'm doing some funny things over here. I'm changing all the rules. OK, there it is. So this particular pattern has you can see it. He has this leg to the upside. Just call it one big leg. Like I call it. This is the axe handle. I call it the falling axe. It's like a, a trend line that goes up, and then you make lower highs and much lower lows. They are lower highs and much lower lows. Then all of a sudden, it tries to form a base of support, 
And if it takes out the, the declining upper trend line, that can be very positive and it can take you sometimes all the way to the top. But most importantly, what you want to at that particular point, what I want to look for is does the MAC, has the MACD turned around and crossed positive? It hasn't yet. It's close, but it hasn't yet. It's made a fantastic turn because of the strength of the Dow. Number two is, is the stochastic, which I usually like to see go under 15%, preferably single digits, turning sharply higher. When it's nice, it's up 30, at 34%. That's not great, but it's nice. But the on-balance volume is lagging. The little blue line is, is lagging a little bit. And if you can see in the weekly chart, we did very nicely here. We went right to what I call the Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone this green and pink rising this narrow yes. channel yeah and then it, it went to the top so a lot of things here are already perfect for a takeoff pattern but we don't have synchronicity with um, the qqqs that's the index 100 and I, at this particular point, we're actually still short. We're still short and actually making money via the instrument we've got. Um, it's kind of stalled right here. And I suspect that this, what I've been speaking to you about is a rotational correction. I suspect that that's going to go on for a, quite a bit over the, over the uh, December month. And one of the reasons why I say that is the tech sector had just a spectacular run to the upside. And it deserves some kind of a breather. And that's all it is so far. I mean, going from 408 down to 378, that's not much of a correction, but it is the start of a correction. So unless something really fantastic happens between now and this coming Friday for the weekly candle to change, I suspect that what we're looking at is there are a lot. I, I'm sure if you've gone through charts, you've looked and said, I can't believe that. And you can name your uh, NDX 100 stock, NASDAQ 100. Some of them have dropped 20, 30, 40, even 50 percent. Yeah, like I know. Doc, you sign. Yeah. So so this is not really telling you everything that's going on. And that's the reason why I think that there's still enough sectors within the Nasdaq 100 that can can kind of put a cap on the upside. That's what I'm saying. And the and the rollover into the Dow type stocks, I think is very important. And that's really, you know, for since I think the summer of 2010, I've been saying to you, it's very interesting that we've had rotational corrections because it allows one sector that's overbought to take a breather while another sector that's that's kind of oversold to take its place. And I think that's kind of what we're looking at right now. And so what we've done for my subscribers is we've gone to back to individual stocks to see if we can get the stocks that are acting the best and just try to hold on to those. So this is a very important moment that we're looking at. And I'll just say a Dow above 30, uh, 36,000 would be very impressive, I must say. But at this point, we're going to watch it really close. And folks, very easy to get his newsletter. Just come over to TFNN. Bowser, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to show tomorrow. Thank you, Tom. You too. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.